a nasty, unclean Gentile can come to you the same way we do? No, God. They're going to have to keep some laws. They're going to have to earn it. I, I'm not too sure. You're saying there's no distinction. You're saying with those who have the law and those who do not, did not have the Mosaic law, you mean to tell me we get righteous the same way? No, God. You see, and, 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 the, and they'll, I'm going to get into this, but they'll struggle with this all throughout the New Testament. To the degree that in Acts 15, they're going to have to have a meeting about circumcision. Because the notion of a, Jew, of a Gentile coming into the kingdom without their tradition and without their law, they, they, they didn't like the idea that you mean to tell me that our heritage and all of our traditions, all the stuff that we have done, not only your law, God, but even the stuff we added to your law. They gonna have to come by that stuff. You mean to tell me you getting rid of all that and you got the audacity to say all they gotta do is put faith in Christ Jesus? You see, when you've been God's people for a long time, sometimes you get loyal to traditions and sometimes you don't like the idea that a person can come to Christ separate and apart from your heritage and we got the same problem in the church of Christ right now today we think folk can only come to Jesus by not clapping we think some folk can only come to Jesus by sitting stoic and acting like God has not done anything for you we got folk in the church of Christ that act like if you don't do it exactly the way I do it then you're going to have a problem with God no, God ain't got a problem with me, you got a problem with me because I can come to God and do it the way my culture allows me to do it. If I want to clap, I'm going to clap. If I want to shout, I'm going to shout. If I want to jump, I'm going to jump because I can come to Jesus and I don't need your tradition. Are you following it while I'm on that? If you wasn't there when God brought me out of my hell and high water, if you weren't there when he put food on my table, and if you were in there, when he put clothes on my back, and if you were in there, when he got me out of the hospital, you ain't got no jurisdiction over my praise. You can't tell me how to give God praise. You can't tell me how to express my joy if you only knew what the doctor told me, and if you only knew how I was living in my car. But somehow, God brought me out of a bad situation. I'm going to jump. I'm going to clap. I'm going to run. I'm going to do whatever it is to express my joy. Because some folk are so loyal to their tradition that they'll treat their tradition like it's God's law. Well, now in this context, I'm done, I promise. Save some for Monday. Let me get to what I told y'all not to. Look at verse 22 one more time. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe for there is no distinction Watch this. What you mean there's no distinction? Wait a minute. We all come to him by faith. There's no distinction. Now watch this. Why is there no distinction? For all. The reason we got to come to him the same way is because we all got the same problem. Whether you got the law or you don't have the law, you got a problem. The problem is you cannot attain righteousness. And we got to get it through Jesus. Watch this. Oh, help me. For all that sin and falling short of the glory of God, being participial phrase, justified freely. I'm not going to finish this clip. Being the word freely, that's 
how it's translated in your King James Version. But if you're reading the New American Standard Version, you may be reading translated as a gift. Right? The word Doria means to give something without cause. All right, say that again. Stay there, stay there. Let that marinate. I'm going to give you a gift, but it won't be because you caused me to give The reason it's a gift, the reason it's a Dorian, is because you didn't have to do anything to earn the gift. I'm hurrying up. I'm hurrying up. I don't know my brother's name. But here's what God is saying. Well, I know this real way. So, when God looked at him, God was thinking about your state. God said, I want to give him something. But when I searched him and looked at his heart, looked at his life, I couldn't find nothing to cause me to give it. You so sinful that God couldn't find his reason in you. So when God needed to find a reason to give you the gift, he had to search himself. When God searched himself, he ran into something called unconditional love. Which means I'm going to give you something that you could never earn on your own. You so sinful that when I searched you, I could not find a cause. So to find a cause, I had to search it myself. Distinction. There, there, there ain't no difference. Everybody got to come in the same way. Y'all got that? No, 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 no. Okay, but you understand. I'm not as bad. Man, I need a tall brother. And I need a short young man. It's going to be hard. The first one's easy. The second one is harder than me. Finding somebody shorter than me. Hey, my man. You know, we know each other. Can you come up here? That's my dude. How you doing? Y'all? I'm going to pay you for this, okay? You're going to get paid. You're going to get paid for this. And don't let your mama try to get none of that because I know her, man. She'll try to take this money. Right my, my friend, uh, you stay right here. Now, this young man. I've known him since he was born. Uh -huh. I've watched him grow up. Uh -huh. But what I like about him, come walk this way. What I like about him right now, he's still short. <laughs> right now. Ain't no telling what a year is going to look like. Okay? Uh, he's shorter than I am. And for a moment in time, he takes attention off of my shoulders for a moment because I found somebody and I'm going to help me right here that's shorter than me so when he's my standard I feel tall because I like comparing myself to things that I'm taller than I don't know this brother, but I don't like him. <laughs> but the reason I don't like him is because he exposes how short I am. When the standard changed, now I went from confidence to being humbled. Because when I stood next to him, he exposed that I'm not as tall as I thought I was. 
We got a lot of folk in the church that love to stand next to people that they believe they're taller than. And they love to show that I'm not as bad or as short as this person. But I dare you to stand next to Jesus. Because when you stand next to Jesus, you're going to find out you're not as tall as you thought you were. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You may have this. Are you following that? And that's why some folk can't accept this message. Because you're so busy comparing yourself to shorter people. Come here. I'm done. I got to end with this and with mamas. I'll take you home. Y'all being justified freely by his grace, the redemption that is in Christ, who God, here it is. I won't get no further. Who God, listen real carefully. This part of the text always makes me emotional because of what he did. I can, I, you know, I'm thankful that he, uh, I know how bad I am. Y'all don't mind if I preach it to you? Okay, I know, I know your image of a preacher is that he never struggles. Can I tell you that I do? Uh, with a variety of things. And before you look at me too strange, you do too. <laughs> I'm just willing to tell you the truth. This, 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 that's why this part of the verse, it says, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation. Watch this. I'm done, I promise. A propitiation in his blood through faith. This was to demonstrate that God is righteous. Because in the forbearance of God, he passed over the sins previously committed. For the demonstration, I say, of his righteousness at this present time, so that he would be just and the justifier of the one who has faith, where there is boasting. I'm done. Watch this. When you see Jesus on the cross, the Bible calls him a propitiation. Okay. That word is only used one other time in Hebrews 9. Watch this. And it means mercy seat. In the tabernacle, in the Old Testament, I don't want to preach this, but the tabernacle was one way in. Mm -hmm. Remember, it had only one door. Yes. And it had a fence around it that suggested nobody can come to God except through one door. All right, all right. I don't have time. When you come in, there's an altar, which means a sacrifice must be done. Right. Or you cannot get in God's presence. Amen. Then there's another object called the labor, which means you had to watch before you entered. Because to get to God's presence, you got to come by blood and water. All right, come on, come on. When you move through the veil, you're in a place called the holy place. And it has three furniture objects that are there. Won't have time to explain those. Shoe bread. And the, and the altar of incense and you got these three and the candlesticks, you have these three objects then in front of you there's a veil that only the high priest can go in once a year when he goes in there he's facing an object called the Ark of the Covenant when he gets to the Ark of the Covenant the Ark of the Covenant is this box like shape and inside of that Ark is the Ten Commandment law. Yeah, that's right. Come here. Mm -hmm. But the lid mm -hmm. that covers it mm -hmm. is called the mercy seat. Yeah. Yeah. Inside. Yeah. 
there's a Ten Commandment law. But God covered the law with a thing called mercy. Inside of the ark is Ten Commandments that God would not leave uncovered to let you know what was coming. God put the law inside of the ark and then he covered it with a thing called mercy seat that the New Testament called propitiation. What is Jesus to me? Jesus is my mercy seat that covered the law that I could not put up with. So when God did that, when he treated Jesus as a propitiation, watch this. It showed God was righteous. Why? Because there were some sins in the Old Testament that God did not give a just recompense. So when Jesus died, help me. Jesus' blood not only covered sin, present, and future. But that blood covered what happened in the past. God said to show you how righteous I am. If you think I missed a sin in the Old Testament, I made Jesus the payment for past, present, and sins not even done yet. Do you hear me? Now watch this. Now what God says to that is, Verse 27, he says, How did I told you that that's how you get saved? Where then is your boast? Who got the audacity to be arrogant about your morality when God has made very clear, ain't none of y'all righteous? Are you following that? How, how does this work, brother? Hey, you, you may be saying, Man, I, I want to be saved right now this morning. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want you to do it. But, but you, you can't really save yourself. Not on your own strength. No, no, no. Well, how, how am I going to get saved? I need you to stop trying to save yourself on your own strength. Stop saying when I get good enough. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know how many people say no to the gospel? Because in their mind, they got to be good enough. And nobody ever told them, you will never be good enough. Should, should, should we tell folk about the church? Sure we should. But, but that's what they become. Yeah. All right, you're not going like this. The church is not even something you look for. The church is what you become. And right in a desert, there was an Ethiopian unit that became the church right there in the desert. Because he didn't have to look for the church, he had to become the church. We've been sending folk to look for what they ought to become. Come on. I'll be back on that. This man, praise God. But if you want to say, you, 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 why you, why you keep, why you keep trying to get to God on your own righteousness? You're drowning. And the more you wiggle, the more you drown. How does God save you? He saves you the same way a lifeguard does. I was at the YMCA. Mm -hmm. We had to learn how to also get lifeguard training. Mm -hmm. So there's two ways you can save somebody from drowning. Mm -hmm. You can throw mm -hmm. a rope in a, in a buoy mm -hmm. to allow them to grab it and pull them out. Mm -hmm. They said, but that's not the most effective way 
because there's no guarantee they'll grab it. Right. If you really want to save somebody, oh, yeah. you got to come where they are. You got to enter into their world and their environment. When you get to their environment, I need you to posture yourself around them. But you can't save them yet. Because as long as they're flailing their arms and they're trying to save themselves on their own strength, you can't help them yet. You gotta wait till their strength has been depleted. And when they completely get exhausted, then you come up behind the person. Let them put their full weight on you. Let them depend on your strength. And when they put their weight on you, then you pull them back to shore. Get them to where they're trying to go. Not on their strength, but they gotta lean on your strength. I've come today to tell you, thank God Jesus came where you were. Entered into your environment. Oh, and he positioned himself around you. And when you get tired of trying to get to him on your own righteousness, rest on the Savior and he'll pull you well you're trying to go I'll come to to tell you lean on his righteousness and God will say you are in right standing with me not because of what you did but because of what how do you receive the Hayward all you have to do by faith is be baptized in water for the remission of sin. Oh, well, that sounds like I got to earn it. No, you don't do nothing in baptism. God does all the work in baptism. And he washes away your sins. If there's somebody here right now, somebody that's saying, this is my day. Somebody that's saying, I don't want to live like this anymore. I'm tired of living in a way where I can't be sure I'm saved. Oh God, I know that I want to go to heaven, but my behavior is so unsure. I know I need to have a righteous lifestyle, Come on. but I still fail. Amen. Brother Haywood, can a person like me that struggles be saved? You can be saved by trusting his righteousness. And when you mess up, you repent, confess, and keep walking. Repent, acknowledge, and keep walking. Military calls it drills. I've done this at Southside in Orlando many times. And you, you do your drill walk. But every now and then somebody gets out of line and the feet are off. Yeah, yep, the feet off. Right? And then when the feet are off, you got to get back in line. But the, the drill sergeant said, don't stop walking. Just skip a step. You, say, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't stop walking. Just, just. See, see how I did that? You, you, don't, you don't stop. You don't be like, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, hold up. Eric. No, no, no. Keep going, right? See, when you walk the Christian grace, yeah, yeah. when you walk this, this walk, at some point you're going to get out of line. Right, right, right. Don't give up on me. Just give me some time to. <laughs> I know sometimes I go to the wrong place. And I, and last night I thought the wrong thing. But but hold up. Don't send me to hell yet. Just give me some time. <laughs> I'm scared. Praise God. I, 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 I thought the wrong thing and I went the wrong place, but thank God for grace because grace will give me a chance. Step. 
Skip, man. Stand where you are. Stand where you are. Stand where you are. Stand where you are. Skip, man. Skip. Man, don't give up on folk. Give them a minute to skip. Praise God. That's a catchphrase in West End, boy. Skip. Man, when folk come to my office and they tell me, man, I messed up, brother. Here, a skip. You better skip before somebody find out. Because <laughs> church folk don't give you time to skip. You're here. You need to come home. Do you need prayer? You need prayer. If you're here and you're saying, Brother Hayward, I've lived unconfident. Because I, I've been coming to church and I didn't even think I was saved. I, I know I've been baptized, but man, I just always felt like I couldn't be sure. Well, today... I want, I want to pray for you yeah. to let you know his blood is sufficient. Yeah. Okay. If you want to be baptized, I want you to come on and say it's time to give my life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And as these men are singing, I want you to come on and say this is my time. This is my life. Jesus loves me enough that he is my mercy seat. And I know he's able. While we start singing, brethren, while we start singing. What can wash up? I believe you trust this. I believe this. Is somebody ready to come? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All praise. Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. 